Hey, hey everyone. Uh, welcome to Super User TV again. Uh, I have two great guests for you, uh, Boris Wensky from Morantis and Jesse Proudman from Blue Box, an IBM company. Uh, Boris and Jesse, why don't you introduce yourselves? Sure, I can start, I guess. So, I am Boris Wensky. I'm co-founder, chief marketing officer at Morantis. So, I'm Jesse Proudman. I was the CTO of Blue Box, uh, now an IBM distinguished engineer and CTO of, of the Blue Box offering inside IBM. Great, thank you. Now, you two have uh, a part of two companies that have really made that jump from being a startup to very big players in the OpenStack ecosystem. So, I wanted to know um, what, what, is, what has been some of the biggest challenges for you when you first uh, tried to build this, your startup? You want to start? Yeah, I'll start. So, uh, Blue Box was around for, I don't know, nine years or so before uh, we really got involved in the OpenStack community in a big way. Um, the, the biggest challenge for us was figuring out some of our, our positioning in the space. So if you, if you look at OpenStack, even to this day, there are a lot of duplicative offerings and differentiation with an open source product is a hard thing to do. So we, we spent a lot of time looking at the business models in the space and, and figured out a different approach that we could take the as a service model. Uh, realized that that was a, a place that uh, wasn't as saturated as, as some of the other models in the space and one that we felt really the intellectual property that we built in the previous nine years of the company would, would help us uh, would help us succeed in. So that, that business model piece was a really important factor for us. Well, from our standpoint, um, I guess we're somewhat similar to Blue Box in the sense that uh, um, we weren't one of the cool kids that started OpenStack. Mm -hmm. Neither were we one of the large companies that can make a press release and say we're putting a billion dollars behind OpenStack mm -hmm. and get everybody's eyeballs. So uh, we got involved maybe a year into already OpenStack being there, and uh, the market was in place, and a lot of brands were in place. Uh, some folks were benefiting from the you know cool kids that started type of you know association. Uh, big players naturally from their existing footprint and uh, the enterprise and their existing brands. So actually, um, getting getting any kind of uh, credibility behind the Morantis brand. Uh, was one of the biggest challenge for us. And uh, this actually dovetails also into uh, um, you know, the, the value proposition that we have, because you can, you can build uh, credibility if you're focusing on some very niche technology solution to a specific problem. The problem of OpenStack is that it's pretty uh, kind of horizontal platform, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to get kind of really creative about uh, um, you know, being relevant um, in what you offer. Uh, so, you know, we started out positioning ourselves as the services guys and winning credibility as the services guys for OpenStack battling that battle against, you know, IBM and Cisco and HP that were all there. That was kind of the biggest challenge. And I think the, the other big thing that you guys did really well and I think helped us was, was having a voice and a, and a position and an opinion and being really consistent with that. And I think if you look at the companies that have been the most successful in this space, and they, they were very vocal uh, and, and present and visible uh, with, with their position and their thoughts in the, in the space. And I think we both benefited from, from that ability. Yeah. Great, so what, um, what, are you th what are some of the key things that you and your company did to make that jump from being a startup to being an established player in the OpenStack ecosystem? Um, I think that you know, from our standpoint, Nothing that we did is really unique to OpenStack. I think that's kind of just a playbook for how to get there uh, for any business. And our, our view was that uh, we need to make sure, so we, we built a brand, you know, services for OpenStack, okay, Marantz's name out there, and then we needed to figure out how to make sure that whatever we deliver to the customer actually meets the expectations, and at the same time, uh, what we promise is aligned with the already preconceived notions, expectations that people are coming into OpenStack with, right? So we started as services, and uh, um, you know, it's not it's not a sexy thing, right? But we kind of stuck with it, and our position was that we have to kind of gradually evolve our value proposition, find the kind of repeat repeatable pockets of value that we can productize, and gradually float it into the customers, and then finally packaging it into that into the distribution, and then moving onward. So balancing that evolution um, together with the OpenStack ecosystem and the kind of, uh, you know, the buying patterns of the people that are bought into OpenStack, that's been probably uh, the biggest, the biggest 
kind of a uh, contributor to our success. Yeah, I think from, from our position, I think that a day going from startup to established player was the acquisition date. Right? Right. So um, in, the, in this world, you can have the best technology, you can have the, the best offerings, um, but for the, the customers, the enterprise buyers that are really interested and have the budgets, uh, oftentimes the, the incumbent relationships can be really helpful. Uh, and so being able to bring the technology that we built as that startup into IBM and leverage its data center footprint around the globe, leverage its account relationships, uh, leverage its, its upstream contributions, uh, that was really a pivotal date for us in, in how we were able to, to spread what we built uh, far and wide. And what do you think you, uh, Blue Box did that made you an attractive uh, an acquisition for IBM? Yeah, you know, I, I think it, it came down to the technology. So again, we, we, when we entered the OpenStack space, we picked a specific methodology on how we were going to approach this. So the distribution model, there's a bunch of companies out there doing it and doing that well, so we knew that wasn't going to work for us. Uh, but we had a bunch of technology that we built that allowed us to really efficiently run OpenStack offerings uh, as a service. And, and the key there is efficiency, right? So IBM had an offering uh, in market that did the same thing uh, that the Blue Box offering does, a similar product. In fact, architected somewhat similarly as well, but they were missing sort of that operational technology that, that we'd built. Um, and so when, when they saw that componentry that we had and we saw what they had with their, with their footprint, it was sort of the the ha moment, like we can do the one plus one is three, bring these things together and have a, a much more compelling offering. Great, so now you two are the sort of the wise sages of the OpenStack community. So as, as the people that startups look to uh, for, as examples to follow, what, are, what, what key advice would you give to a new startup in the OpenStack ecosystem today? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, so I think that uh, I think that uh, at this point, if uh, you were to do a startup um, in the OpenStack ecosystem, it has to be really innovative and focused um, around a very kind of a interesting new either business model or technology play. Uh, the time, kind of the ship has sailed for doing kind of like a, you know just just generic, I think uh, platform type. I am the OpenStack guy uh, startup. That's going to be very capital intensive at this point in time. But I think that there is a lot of uh, opportunity still to innovate um, kind of uh, around the business models as well as around technology. So you can, you, know, you can focus very much on specific network for containers and OpenStack or something like this. Or um, kind of new interesting delivery models that guys like Platform 9, for example, are doing or zero stack that can potentially pan out. Or if you're focusing on a particular sector, like you know, focusing on the government sector, you really know how to do you know, government certification and you have the right contacts there, you need to have package OpenStack for government consumption. So things like this has to be very focused. It can be kind of horizontal, generic, just attached to OpenStack itself. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's all about finding your niche. So to some extent, OpenStack is pretty boring now. Like, you go back two or three years and every summit was a big debate about does this thing work, will it last? Uh, and here we've got Gartner up on stage now, uh, you know, singing its praises. So when something's boring, um, sort of the, the base level line for, for startups isn't there. The, the reason startups flourish is because they solve sort of that, that unique, interesting problem on the, the edge or the fringe uh, for something that, that is rapidly changing or, or new. So uh, that's not to say that that doesn't exist in OpenStack, but it's certainly not at the, the core anymore. So. Um, you know, you go walk the expo hall here, there's a whole bunch of companies that, that exist that are doing all kinds of things on the periphery or up the stack or into the services layer. Um, that, and that's where you got to go. You got to figure out uh, what, what's the hole, what's, the, what's, the, uh, what's missing uh, from the space, because it's, it's not just that core piece anymore. That's, that's definitely solved. Um, and, then, and then how are you going to make material difference? And how are you going to make money? I think that's the, the last big challenge, right? Uh, and it's been a challenge, I think, for everybody in the open stack space for a long time um, was, was getting the platform to a place where enterprises are ready to invest dollars. We're finally now there, uh, and customers are buying, and there's revenue flowing in, but now you've got to figure out as a startup, the piece that you're adding, is there enough revenue to actually build a meaningful long-term business uh, in, in that specific place? Makes sense. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Jesse and Boris, for joining us, and thank you for everyone who's watching Super User TV. Thanks. Thank you.